Good and welcome, my name is Amariska and today I will be doing a short review of the book The Desert Spear by Peter V. Bratt. I finished reading this quite a while ago already and have been planning to do a review for a while now. This book uh, is the continuation of The Warded Man by Peter V. Bratt, a book I enjoyed very, very, very much. So much I gave it like four or four and a half stars. This one I think I gave three and a half stars, but that doesn't say that much. What I thought of this book, it's, uh, like I said, it's a continuation. It starts off with the backstory of Jardir, a minor character in the first book. And it explains his past and part of his present uh, with his son. And what the point was with this book is the first 200 of the 600 pages are telling the story about Jardir. And, but I felt like half or even more than half of it could have been told in way less page time. It felt like a separate novel instead of a backstory. Which is a little bit sad because it could have maybe turned into a separate novel and not even a novella because it spans about like 35 years of the life of the character. It also explains a little bit about how his uh, relationships with his sons came to life and why he doesn't have that much of a relationship going on with his daughters, although that was better explained in this book, The Daylight War, which I will be doing a review on as well. But I felt so. I felt like that parts with his sons were not uh, to be ignored. But I felt like his backstory could have been told in so much less, less page time. It took me so long, like three months or so, to read those first 200 pages because I don't really care for that character. And I wanted the rest of the story of the other characters in the cast of characters on my page. The book also did start off with sort of a new perspective of a demon, a mind demon. I also did not really care for that perspective because it does not appear at all later in the book. It took over 200 pages to get into it and then I felt like slowly the characters that were built up in the first book seem to decline in how they were, like they were not themselves or they made decisions that made you severely doubt if the character was built up at all. And I wanted to make two separate reviews but I'm going a little bit into the Daylight War, which explains the backstory of Jardier's wife and also why uh, his daughters did uh, are not even present in the book before. At least they sort of are, but you don't really know who his daughters are because he misses them, misses them. Like they go away uh, very, very young by the doing of his wife. But you see where she comes from. And honestly, it made me care less for her character instead of more. Um, as did it with Jardir. I like my character if you have like a, a character that is antagonistic and you know that he makes like morally extremely dark grey decisions. I like it that stated that way. I don't want the author uh, uh, to give me the feeling that you should live for that character when obviously the person has been brainwashed because in this book it gets, and also in the other book, it gets clear Jardir knows that he should not do certain things and he still does them. And also you get see, to see the twisted culture he comes from and why he fears the world he does. So, I don't know. I, I did not care for the character, I cared even less after that part. And I felt very disconnected from the rest of the characters. I still liked Arlen's character, but it became less. I started 
hardly caring at all for our precious little cinnamon roll that I don't even know the name of anymore. I think it was uh, it was a violin playing boy and yeah that degeneration went on in this book which by the way is not horror fantasy anymore but just a cloaked fantasy romance erotica type thing for the first half of the book and then the second half is fighting but it's still romance and still like we're getting married. Arlen makes a 180 shift when he meets his uh, childhood acquaintance Rena, which he was who he was promised to in the beginning of the first book. And they decide within a couple of weeks to marry, even though they barely know one another. And apparently it's true love. Rena is just an in my opinion an arrogant person who doesn't listen to actually good advice. It is even more apparent in this book than that other book because she is introduced at like beginning of this one or the end of the other one. It's just like the characters I cared for don't really seem to exist anymore. So why would I still, you know, like the story very much? Because it is not as if the writing is sublime or original. It's very simple and easy to read, but that leaves for the plot and the characters to be very, very well done. And I, especially in this one, but also in the other one I put down here, I did not feel like the plot progressed uh, extremely much. More in this one than in this one, but still not a lot. And on top of that, there is a cliffhanger quote unquote at the end of this book but it's something that happens between Arlen and Jadir and I did not care for any of the two characters anymore so I don't fucking care what happens to them I want to know what happens to Lisha oh and the violin playing boy is called a Roger I just remembered like he also decides almost spontaneously to marry to two girls he did, doesn't know, even though he comes from a monogamous culture. He has a feeling he has to save those girls or something. I found it very strange. Like, the whole whole thing is so incomprehensible to me. I'd rather have unlikable characters that are purely unlikable and are written to be somewhat uh, how do you explain it? It felt like, especially Jardia, but also some of his uh, sons and some other characters like Inovera, which is, who is Jardia's wife. Both of them, they got those novels to explain their backgrounds, like Lisha, Roger and Arlen got their backgrounds explained in The Warded Man or The Painted Man, depending on where you buy the book. So the characters' backgrounds get explained, but I like Devious, Cunning, Inovera a lot before I read this book. Just like with Jardir, I'd rather have him a mean person who knows he is doing mean stuff and awful stuff to people, who knows he should not betray his friends but still does it because he believes it's his full right. I'd rather have that kind of a character than those two uh, characters being written to be maybe not likable, but that you have to understand their every incentive that could have been literally done in one chapter. I did not need two complete backstories. And Inovera, or as it is pronounced in the audiobooks I listened to, Inavera's backstory? I did not care one bit. It destroyed her character for me because you see where she comes from but ha what she is acting like now doesn't at all make sense to me with the backstory. So the backstory kind of destroyed her cunning character. I don't need a backstory, I need the fucking cunning character I love. And this uh, book made her so petty at times that their 
her character got destroyed for me. The only character that is somewhat akin to the one we started with and got developed, in my opinion, very well, but a lot of people don't think so, is Leisha. She is the only character I still somewhat care for and I want, and Aban, which is an old friend of Jardia's and of Arlen's. He is just a very kind, sort of wise old man. For those two characters, I want to see what happens. And I'm slightly curious to see how the other characters get developed because some make a 180 turn, especially Arlen, at a certain point in this or this book when he meets Rena. And I know I told spoilers, but it happens pretty close after they meet one another and decide for some strange unknown to me reason to get married. Because to me, they don't seem like a very well chem uh, chemically thought out match. Romantically also, Leisha barely cares for what Arlen gives her in advice, even though it is actually about something that is impacting her entire life. But I know this is now going to be on a ramble and going to end up in me giving a whole lot of spoilers I don't need to give. Basically, I think this is the worst book in the series so far. I have heard more people say they thought this was the worst book in the quintet because this is a series of, series of five books. They have all five been released yet. I have the skull thrown in my TBR of this year because I want to see if I like the story enough to finish that book and then maybe decide if I want to still read the core, which is the final installment, or if I want to DNF anywhere in between the beginning of the fourth and the beginning of the fifth book. Because I also still have a novella lying around somewhere that I also might want to read. I will just see what happens. I hope with all my heart book four is better than the Daylight War because this was eh, one of my least favorite books because it totally did not answer the expectations you get from the series. But this is it for now. Like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to. Thank you for watching and on to the